And even as we get into Joshua number six, come on, I'm excited about today. This is this is a very uh, familiar text. Come on, we we're getting ready to talk about we talk about the walls are coming down. But I love I love chapters one through five. I love how God has been setting us up so that we can see that there are going to be some walls that's getting ready to fall in our life. I believe that God is setting you up in this season today, my friend. I, I believe that God is carving you out. He's positioning you in a very impactful way. Come on. In a very influential way that God wants to shine his light. But before he sends you, come on, we found out in verse, I mean, excuse me, in chapter number five, before God sends you, he has to sometimes cut you. He has to heal you. In order to heal you, he has to cut you. And this is a very powerful because because even before we get into chapter six, I think it's very interesting that God does. I'm going to put it this way. God does surgery <laughs> before he sends you. That he has to cut away the Egypt that's inside of you. And we all have some Egypt that's left inside. of. We all have some past sins that we have inside of us. And God is saying, I, I, before I send you into that land, I want to clean you. I want to cut you. I want to do some surgery on your heart because I want to make new. I want to make room for the new. I, I, I want to set you up in a position where I want to prepare you so that I can increase you so that I can remove what doesn't necessarily need to be there anymore. So I can release what actually needs to be there. See, this is what the 21 days of prayer and fasting is all about, my friend. It's carving out a way so that we can prepare our hearts to make room for the new. This, this is us doing spring cleaning in January. It's getting rid of the old so that God can release the new. And, and, and Israelites, they're getting ready to step into the newness. That God's been speaking a promise for a mighty long time, and they are, they are closer than they have ever been before. They can see Jericho. Mm. They can smell Jericho. That they they can put their eyes. This is just not the spies anymore. This is this is the whole camp. They're close. They're they're, they're seeing it for the first time. They've been hearing the reports, and now they actually are standing there. They're close, and there's a wall in front of them. And this is where we're getting ready to go because I believe God is getting ready. God is getting ready to speak a word to you because maybe you've been in the wilderness and now you're standing in front of a Jericho. You're standing in front of a wall and God tells them you are going to have to walk by faith, not by sight. You're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to have to walk around these walls and believe that I am working. You're going to have to walk around these walls and, and, and you may not know that I'm working. Or can I say it this way? You may not see that the plan is working, but I need you to walk by faith and trust me in the ridiculous and watch me do the miraculous. And now you you don't see the progress, but I need you to believe me by faith. Watch this. See, I believe we're getting ready to speak a word to, to you today, my friend. Maybe you're in a season right now where, where you, you, you just seem that you can't measure the progress. You, 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 you can't measure the progress because it's not obvious. And, and just because you cannot measure, the, you, just because you cannot measure the, 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 the progress, God is saying, that does not mean that the faith, there we go. That does not mean that the faith is not working. Let me re-say that because I'm hearing even more what God is saying. Because sometimes we stop when we have been so close to obtaining the promises of God and we fail short because we cannot measure the progress. But my friend, there will be seasons in your life where you cannot measure the progress. You have to trust God by faith. See, our eyes will want to play tricks on us. The reality wants to play tricks on us. That may be the reality, but the truth in my heart says that God is working. Even when I don't see him working, come on, we sing the song. I know he's moving. I know he's doing something. I know I can't measure it. I can't put a yardstick among this measuring, uh, uh, among the progress, 
But my faith says on lap number six, keep walking. And that's what I want to speak a word to this morning. I'm being reminded here in Joshua 6, every time God leads me to Joshua 6, it's, it's a reminder to take another lap. It's a reminder in lap number two, hey, keep walking. I know the plan doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't measure up. Can you imagine this? Can I just give a little bit of context? Because this is powerful. This is, this is Jericho. Jericho is a fortified city. And they they are they are well defended with 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 powerful walls around the entire city. And you would think that God would give them a plan to actually defeat the wall. Or can I say this way? God would give them some type of tool that makes sense to defeat the very thing that's in front of them. But in but instead of giving them a tool, he gives them worship. Yeah. And instead of giving them a tool, instead of giving them where it seems like they should have a jackhammer, God, give me a jackhammer to go at this wall. No, God doesn't give them the obvious. God tells them to go walk, go, go, go worship, go praise, go blow your trumpet, go sit with me, go follow behind the Ark of the Covenant and watch what I'm getting ready to do. And sometimes God will send you on a journey that doesn't make sense. Or God will send you on a journey where you cannot measure that. You cannot measure that by a yardstick. You have to measure it by your faith. You have to put your faith before God and say, God, even in the ridiculous, I'm getting ready to trust you. And I believe this is a word for somebody in the, in the month of January. I'm here to push you as a coach. I'm here to tell you don't quit. I'm here to tell you to keep moving. I'm here to tell you to take another lap. I'm here to tell you to take another lap with your life. I'm here to tell you to take another lap in that business. Take another lap with that career. Take another lap with God. Don't give up on God. Come on, somebody. Because he did not give up on you. And God is saying, trust me in another lap. I, I'm here to preach a word. I'm feeling it right now. It's coming to me. It's early in a Monday morning. I got to get the juices flowing. But I hear what God is saying because there's many of us that's at lap number six right now. Yeah. And you are close than you have ever been before. You're on lap number six. You are huffing. You are puffing. You're, you're losing your breath. And you're not, you're trying to figure it out. And did I make the right choice? And did, I don't know. Did I miss you, God? If I missed you, just let me know, God. And I'll turn the other way. I, I just need your voice, God. Lead me, God. I need, I have more questions than I have answers, God. I, I just need you to speak a word. And you are in a lap number six season. And I'm here to tell you, hey, take another lap. Take another lap. Continue walking circles around of everything that God has called you to do. Mm. Continue to pray circles around of everything that God has called you to do. You're in a season where God is saying, circle it with prayer. Whoo! Circle it with worship. Come on. Circle it with your faith. Come on. I know you've been waiting for them walls to fall down. I know the plan doesn't make sense, but stay on the journey and keep worshiping. Keep praising him. Who am I preaching to right now? Come on. Don't give up on the very thing that God has called you to do. You're in a lap number six and God say pray circles around it because there's something that's getting ready to shift. There's something that's getting ready to break. I'm preaching to somebody right now on on a Monday morning, and I'm telling you right now, you're stern at a wall. Come on, just take your head up. This is a high wall, and God says, keep walking. Keep walking. I know your heart is broken in this season, but keep walking. I, I, I know it's hard to keep walking when your heart is crushed. It's hard mm -mm. It's to keep walking when, when you don't have any joy, or you, you don't know where you're going. It's it's hard, God, but God tells them to keep walking. Take another lap. So we're going to pick up in Joshua 6, verse number 1. And I'm going to be reading from the CSB. The CSB. We're going to read from 1 through 5 because I think it's something powerful. That I think God wants to show us for our time this morning. I think it's something powerful right here. And I'm going to pick up Joshua 6, verse 1 through 
5, and it reads, fam, and it says, now Joshua, I'm excuse me, now Jericho, was strongly fortified. Underline that. This is a this is a fortified city because of the Israelites. No one leaving or entering. Yeah. I told you back in chapter five that the news got out that you're coming. I, I, I told you that the, the breaking news, come on, the, the, the enemy knows that you're coming. The enemy knows that this is going to be your year. Come on. Jericho, no matter how great they are, they are shaking in their boots right now. They may appear fortified on the outside, but in the inside, they're getting ready to get swallowed up. They, the, other, the other translation said that they, their hearts are beginning to melt away. And I'm here to release a word to you. The very thing that's been attacking you, the very thing that's trying to bring you down, the very thing that's trying to separate you from the love of God, the very thing that's trying to distract you, it's losing its strength. I speak that over your life. It may feel that it's strong on the outside, but God is saying, no, no, the news have got the news has gotten out that you have received, you caught the vision. You caught the revelation. Come on, you are tapped in. You're not quitting. And, and the enemy knows that you're not quitting. And the enemy knows that you're on the way. And just like right here in Joshua 6, 1, they may feel big on the outside, but they know that you are on the way. In verse number two, it says, the Lord said to Joshua, look, I have handed Jericho, its king, its best soldiers, over to you. March around the city with all the men of war, circling the city one time. Yeah. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the ark. But on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the trumpets where there is a prolonged blast. Yeah of the horn and you hear it sound have all the truth give a mighty shout yeah yeah we're going to come back to that give a mighty shout then the city wall will collapse and the troops will advance each man straight ahead yeah straight ahead cc take another lap and i want to pinpoint i want to pinpoint something powerful here for our next remaining minutes together i want to pinpoint something that could easily be stopping you from taking another lap. What, what, what's in your life right now that's stopping you from taking another lap? What, what, what's in your life that's distracting you, that's tripping you up, that's, that's constantly pulling you down? There, we have things in our life that drains us. Come on, there, there are weeks when we're, we're, at, we're at medium where it comes to our gas tank. But these things come in our life, they come and go, and the enemy knows what to bring in your life to actually drain you, to get you off target, to get you off the thought that that vision can come to pass, to get you off from believing by faith that God can do this. We all have these, these things that love to distract us. And I'm, I'm raising that a question. I'm putting a question in your heart. I'm putting a question on your mind this morning. And e even if you're taking notes, begin to write that down. What, what, what is keeping me from taking another lap? Because here's the interesting thing. Watch this. In, in verse one, God actually tells Joshua, the city is on lockdown. The, the, the city is on lockdown. The, the city is fortified. In other words, one, one translation said it this way. It, it says that the city is, is shut down. It's shut up. No one can go out. No one can come in. In other words, this city looks powerful. They, they are ready for war. They, they are in position. They, they know that we're coming. And now they're getting in position. And they look powerful on the outside. But in verse 2, it almost seems that it contradicts itself. I'm setting it up because verse one said the city's on lockdown. Then on verse two, God says, but the city belongs to you. <laughs> Family, come on. I want to be honest this morning. What do you do when what you see doesn't look like anything that God has said? There we go. Thank you. What do you do when, when, when what you're looking at doesn't match up with anything that God is saying. 
Be because what what do you do? Oh, let, let me preach this out a little bit because God is speaking to me right now. What what do you do when, when the pastor is preaching about joy, but you have no joy? Come on. Uh, what do you do when a pastor is saying that, that hey God is blessing you, but then you go home and you and you're crying and you're in the isolation? Come on. See what what do you do when the reality doesn't match what God is saying? This is verse. One and two, verse one said that the city is shut down and they're ready for war. They are fortified. But in verse two, it, you have both of these these polarities on on these spectrums, and one is on this side and the other one is on this side. And God is saying, "No, you got the city, but my eyes see this. My, my eyes see a, a giant. <laughs> my my eyes see a wall that doesn't look like it could be breaking down." My my eyes see that I cannot take that. My my eyes see that I I don't know how I'm going to get through this wall. And God is speaking these two things because because maybe and here's what God is saying. Maybe you don't have a vision problem. Maybe you have a perspective problem. Let me say it again. Maybe you don't have a vision problem. Maybe you have a perspective problem. Because maybe you don't have a belief problem. Yeah, maybe you have a vantage point problem. See, see, when I notice when I fail to stop and take another lap of going after his promises, it's normally usually because I have a false perspective or can I say it this way or an inaccurate vantage point of what God is calling me to go take. See, see, let me, let me give context. Let me get context to make sure I want to make sure you're catching the whole image because Jericho was a big city. Now, excuse me, let me say that correctly. No, actually, Jericho was actually a small city. I, I want to teach this correctly because sometimes we kind of teach it wrong. Jericho was actually not that big. Jericho was a small city. It actually appeared big on the outside because of its walls. See, these walls were huge. They were very tall. Not only were they very tall, family, they they were the, the thickness of the wall. Matter of fact, they can actually ride chariots on the wall. That's how wide the thickness of the wall. Can you imagine getting ready to go to war? This is Israel living out in the wilderness. These are these are farmers that used to be slaves. Come on. And now they, they had to have been trained by God out in the wilderness to become a soldier. This, this story is miraculous. And now they're getting ready to go to Jericho and you're getting ready to fight and you're getting, coming up against this fortified city and they got chariots on the wall. That's how thick this wall was. And this is so, and you're stirring, and can you imagine that they're stirring at a wall? And this is what God is showing me in, in, in the spirit right now, that, that, that you are in a season where you're stirring up. And you're stirring at a a, a a a major wall right now. You're stirring at a at a major wall. And this wall is high. This wall is thick. And and I, like I said it before, you're stirring at a wall. And instead of them giving, instead of God giving them a tool, He tells them to go worship. God is circling us back. He's circling us back to this because God. Sometimes we want God to give us the obvious plan. And sometimes the obvious plan is worship. And, and sometimes we want the obvious, we want, we want the easy way out. And, and God has said, no, go take a walk. Yeah. You don't need a new plan. You just need to go take a walk. You, 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 don't, you, you don't need a new vision. You just need to go take a walk. You, 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 I, I know you feel anxiety coming up. And this is a word for somebody. No, you just need to go take a walk with God. Go take another lap. Go, 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 go walk by faith, not by sight. Go, go walk this off and, and get your heart right. Go walk this off and get your mind right. Go, go walk this off and, and remember that, 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 that God has said this will come to pass. I'm, I'm reminding somebody here because here's the beautiful thing. Worship changes our vantage point. It allows us to see things from a higher perspective. There we go. I, I hope you're following me because God is telling them, I, I know I know Jericho seems mighty on the outside, but actually there's some things that's going on in the inside that you cannot see. 
because there's a wall in front of you. And I know you think this enemy is strong. They, they just appear strong on the outside, but in the inside, they are melting. In the inside, they're actually not that big. Come on, the objects appear bigger, uh, but, but no, when you actually get up on it, it's actually a small chihuahua just barking. That ain't no lion that's roaring. That's just a little, little chihuahua. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible tells us them they appear as a roaring lion, but it's really not that big. It's really not that strong. You are stronger than this, my friend. You are mightier than this, my friend. You will overcome this. I know the wall appears high. I know the wall appears mighty, but I'm telling you right now, take another lap and worship him. Take another lap and, and, and worship him because worship changes your, your vantage point. God gives them a strategy that's actually getting ready to shift their vantage point. God gives them a strategy that, that's getting ready to elevate them so that they can see themselves as they really are. Yeah. God gives them, come on, God, God gives them a strategy so that they won't sit in a low place, but they're getting ready to sit in in a high place. I'm going somewhere real quick because here's the beautiful thing about uh, the definition of vantage point. It's a place, especially a high place that provides a good, clear view of an area. Hmm, a high place. Okay, I, I, I see what you're saying, Webster. I see what you're saying, Webster D Diction. Hurry, a high place, huh? Okay, okay, let's, let's line this up with scriptures. Scriptures tells us this in Ephesians. Come on, I see what you're doing, God. Ephesians teaches us that we are seated in heavenly places. Ha, huh? yeah, yeah, that's a high place. And here's the thing, my friend, sometimes you have to go sit with God in a high place to actually see a different angle. God is trying to shift your mind in this season. God is trying to shift your perspective in this season. And if you continue to stay on ground level, looking at a wall of Jericho that appears to be big, it appears to be mighty, it appears that we will never overcome this as a family, it appears that my business will never get over this, it appears that my heart is so broken from how I was raised as a kid, I don't ever see myself as big as that, I will always see the deficiencies, and you are constant like this in this position, and God is saying, I'm ready to shift you into a new perspective, come higher with me, so that I can change your vantage point. But the only way, my friend, to change your vantage point of the very thing that you're looking at, you got to go take another lap and worship with God. You got to take another lap and worship with God. See, I remember flying over New York City. Man, me, 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 my, my family, we love New York City. And I remember flying over New York City, and we, we, we all know even, even the Empire State Building is a mighty tall building. If I would have did the research early, I'll give you the, the math numbers of, of how tall it is. And I love when we walked up to the Empire State Building and, and on ground level, come on, on ground level, we look up, it's, man, it, it, it disappears in the fog. It, I don't even see the top anymore. It's so big. But then when we get on an airplane and then we're, we're leaving the city and we're flying out and I remember flying over New York City and I remember, come on, we, we, we can see, we see it on the, we see it on, on, on TV and, and all of that. And you can see New York, I mean, the Empire State Building does not look that big when you're in the air. It looks small, but on ground level. Come on, are you walking with me? On ground level, it appears mighty, but when you actually go above the thing, what used to appear big to you is small. It's a little ant in your life. It's not that huge, but you got to take another lap and worship God and walk with God. See, when I take my seat, my vantage point begins to shift. When I take my seat, it shows me that I already have the city. You already got the keys, family. You already have the city. And God is saying through worship, I, I, I'm ready for you to come up a little bit higher. And I want to give you these two, I want to give you these two points of what could possibly be, be stopping you from taking another lap. My first point is this. Write this down. 
Your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. Mm. Let me say that again. Your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. I think this is mighty. This always stuck in my brain. I read it in a book somewhere and it's been a quote here. I will quote the person who wrote it, but I can't even remember the book that I read it in. But it's powerful and I always keep it right here. Because I really do believe that, that your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. And your perspective can actually shift you into places that God is taking you or your past. I mean, or your perspective can actually become your prison. It would just keep you here. I can't knock that. I can't go through that wall, God. I can't overcome that. So I'm just going to I'm going I'm 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 to get these bars up from my perspective and I'm just going to camp out here. And this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying that God is saying that it's time to shift. It's time to shift your perspective on the very thing that you're looking at and allow your perspective to try to allow, allow your perspective to be become your passport so that you can go visit the very things that God is calling you to visit. Number two, number two, write this down. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. Perhaps today, my friend, as we get ready to, to close out, perhaps God is telling you to take another lap. But perhaps God is saying, continue to trust me with the ridiculous so that I can do the miraculous. Will you allow God to will you allow God to do something ridiculous in your life? Do you love him that much? Do you trust him that much? I, I know the plan doesn't make sense. But go walk it out. Go circle it. Go circle it. And I speak that over you over you today. Go take a walk. Go take another lap. Don't quit on it. Keep pushing. Go worship. Because God wants to take your vantage point to another level. Because here's what, and I speak this over your life as I get ready to close. You're an eagle, my friend. You're not a penguin. <laughs> You're not a chicken. No, no. Eagles fly high. Eagles, when the storm come, they don't fly low. They go high. They, out, they, they fly higher than the storm. Eagles. When things begin to get a little messy, eagles go to a, a higher elevation. And, and, and when, when certain birds try to attack eagles, eagles don't fly low. Eagles take the bird to another level. You want to attack me? Come high with me. That's what an eagle do. It flies so high to the point that the bird that tries to attack the eagle begins to lose oxygen because that bird is not designed to go that high. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to your life right now. And you want to stay at ground level. At ground level, that enemy has the vantage point. At, at ground level, that enemy is in his, his space. At, at, at ground level, that enemy can breathe. That enemy can stay strong. But there's something happens when his people decide not to stay on ground level, but his people decide to fly like an eagle and shift its elevation and shift its perspective and shift its vantage point and come to a high place, a seated place that's in heavenly places. And the only way to get there is to begin to worship God. Worship God on this Monday morning. Begin a circle of everything that's trying to bring you down. Circle it, begin a circle of everything that God is telling you to go conquer. C circle it with prayer. Circle it with worship and watch what God is getting ready to do. Amen. Amen. I believe God is speaking a word to you. I, I, I believe God is speaking a word to you today, my friend. I speak new perspective in your life. I believe that God is showing you, you know what, God, I didn't see it that way, but now I see it this way now. And God, so show us a new perspective. Amen. Amen. Amen.